What's up? Today we're gonna take a look at five different opening traps where masters and grandmasters got tricked and lost in five moves, including Vishyanand. So let's take a look. All right, so here's the first game between Ibrahimov playing white against Zhilin. Both of them are strong players. I suppose both grand are grandmasters. Now the 3 9 d7 interposed into the perk defense. And here white played a bishop c4 move, black responded bishop g7. And who would have thought that on the next move black will resign? And yeah, this is what happened after bishop takes f7. Basically, it's a good reminder that you gotta always watch over this f7 square because it's the weakest square in black's position, only defended with the king, and very often tactics involve attack of this f7 square. Now, why did black resign? Well, if king takes, there is knight to g5 follow-up, and black is defenseless. If the king moves back somewhere either to f8 or e8, doesn't really matter, there is a really nasty knight e6 attacking the queen and it can't go away. It also attacks the bishop, but in this case it is irrelevant because we would prefer to grab the queen, so that loses. And if instead black chooses to go forward, that's even worse because then it's queen to f3, a simple checkmate. Yeah, the next one is also really funny, what played uh, pawn d4 against knight f6. Um, I don't tell you the names of players, they aren't very famous, it's like Juan Trank against Franchini, uh, but they are master level opponents, I think, maybe Grandmaster. Uh, Bishop g5, uh, pawn e6, white played knight to d2, white is playing kind of like the Trumpovsky opening, or maybe they want to transpose it into uh, the London system, who knows, black played pawn c5, white decided to capture over here on c5, bishop recaptures, and at this point white decided that they've got an interesting opportunity to turn it into an early attack and they played a move 94. Looks good for white. White takes advantage of this pin, puts more pressure onto the knight, also to the bishop, but there was a surprising upside here. Black simply captured the knight despite of the pin, and white simply resigned, because it turned out that after bishop takes d8, yes, white won a queen, but bishop two takes f2 would be a checkmate. The next one is a very popular opening trap. The white player was a fairly strong player, it's Shirazi. Uh, he's an international master, and he was the champion of Iran. Uh, here, after the Syrian defense, white went for this win gambit. Pawn takes, pawn a3, which is, generally speaking, a pretty good and dangerous opening weapon. Black responded with pawn d5, counter-attacking in the center, and now white started to trade pawns, pawn takes d5, queen takes, and white lightheartedly recaptured on b4, thinking that the exchanges keep going on, but on the next move after queen to e5, white just resigned. And it's actually a fairly common opening trap in the wing gambit that definitely you've got to be aware of because you've got realistic chances to make use of it. By the way, the wing gambit is not such a bad opening for white, it's a pretty good one actually. I've got another video, which I'll link above, if you want to know how to play right for white not to lose in five moves, I've got you covered. All right, now we're coming to the top two opening traps, which allowed players to win just in five moves. And the next trap is a pretty cool one. A friend of mine showed it to me years ago, and I used it since then many times to win a game quickly, especially in Blitz. It works for black. When you go pawn d4, pawn d5, white goes pawn to c4, and now you capture, going into the queen's gamut, accepted. Now the main move for white is knight to f3. And usually black responds symmetrically with knight f6, but there is another move which is also fairly interesting. You play the move pawn to c6. Uh, kind of saying white that if they keep delaying, you know, trying to get their pawn back, you at some point may provide an additional support for it with the move pawn b5, and white may end up being a pawn down. Therefore, your opponent will think, okay, let me play pawn a3 and get it back right now. But then you say, hey, not so easy, because I'm gonna defend it, bishop e6. Now white feels a little bit uncomfortable, you're defending the pawn, but then they think, wait a second, let me go knight g5, looks really cool. I'm gonna attack this bishop, if black doesn't move it away, I'm gonna capture it, then I'm gonna capture over here, destroy black's pawn structure, looks just winning for white. And it's all good, besides just one little note. Black can't play queen a5 with a double attack to the king and the knight, so in addition to an extra pawn that you have, you also win a knight. Extremely effective trap and leads once again, lots of strong players got trapped this way, white player Kunte, I believe is a grandmaster if I'm not mistaken, and so you see that even Grandmaster has got trapped like this. All right, and now finally we're coming to the winner. Uh, well, the, the top trap where Vishyanand lost in five moves. Of course, he's a, an outstanding player, a legendary player overall, but in this particular day, that was not his day. After e4, e5, white player is uh, Zapata, also a strong player. 
uh, black plate for uh, the Petrol's defense. Now knight takes e5, pawn d6, knight f3, knight takes e4. So far so good. White plays knight c3, one of the ways to address uh, the Petrov's defense. And Anna decided to maintain the pressure and instead of taking over here to play the move bishop f5. And it's a very natural looking move, but surprisingly this is a losing mistake and it's only five moves were played and basically it's time for black to resign, which Anna did after white played queen e2. Uh, what's the matter? Well, the knight is pinned, it can't move away, and it's gonna be lost. <laughs> That's the problem. It is attacked with this knight, so if black just defends it somehow, like d5 or whatever, we just play d3, take advantage of the pin, and white wins, the knight can go away. Let's take it back. Black tries queen e7. Maybe that's what Anand was hoping for initially. But that doesn't really help because white has another threat. Knight to d5. This time it's double attack to the queen and pawn. Therefore, black has to maintain the defense of this pawn on c7. And if they play queen d7 or whatever, there is still pawn d3, same tactics, and we win a knight. And in light of that, Anand resigned. If you haven't watched my video about the Russo Gambit, I would highly recommend it. You may click the link over there and check this out. It's an opening for black against white's first move pawn e4, where you've got a chance to trap your pawn literally at every turn. There are so many pitfalls for white that it is just crazy. And of course, if you want to level up your chess overall, your role is welcome to attend my free masterclass by clicking the link over there at the top. Thank you very much.